I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, I want to take you guys back to when I did my first conversion of a Microsoft Access database to SQL Server, which was actually MSDE at the time. And it had a really great outcome for both me and my customers. And I want to take you guys on that journey. Let's get to it. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between SQL Server as a backend versus Azure SQL as a backend, or in, in the case of older databases, it might be MSDE. And uh, it turns out that for our intents and purposes, they're all pretty much the same. Now Azure SQL is essentially SQL Server that's in the cloud, and so you can up upsize your access database to work with Azure SQL and I have a video on that. Make sure to check out the link up above here if you want to see how to how to make your database and make it work on Azure SQL. And many of you are running SQL Server backends or you might be thinking about putting an SQL Server backend uh, in there for your access database. Uh, but you're not quite sure, you know, you might have your access database and you've got it split with your uh, with your data in one file on the network server and you know copies of your front-end code sent to all your users and it works kind of awesome and you're thinking well you know it started to slow down and I'm having kind of network issues and things like that uh, what's it going to look like if I upsize my back end to one of these uh, technologies from Microsoft now, in order to illustrate this, I would like to tell you a story about the first time that I upsized an access database of non-trivial complexity to SQL Server. And uh, I'm gonna tell you the story about when I used MSDE, which was the original SQL Server Express, if you, if you like. Um, it was... Uh, a database that was packaged with Microsoft Access in Access uh, 2000 um, and it included the SQL Server engine so it was a scaled down version of SQL Server 7 and then after that it was SQL Server 2000 and so it had all of the capabilities of the database engine with a load go governor on it um, but it allowed you to to create a back end with no GUI, you had to do it all with the command line and then connect your access database to it, your front end code to it so that you could run your program and get all the benefits of this new uh, SQL server that was sort of up and coming. So MSDE is the Microsoft SQL server database engine uh, and it was sort of like this scaled down version of SQL server and so I decided when I had a client that had many locations and they had this big office and, and they were starting to really slow down and they were bringing on new locations and they wanted to still use their, their Microsoft Access application, um, it presented an opportunity for me to use MSDE. And so I sort of studied it. This is like 15, 20 years ago, uh, but I studied it and I installed it and got it all running and I converted all their data to uh, SQL Server and wow, what a difference did it make. I was actually pretty shocked at how good it was um, and I couldn't believe that uh, I hadn't transitioned uh, sooner on some of my other client sites once I saw how good it was uh, with the Microsoft Access as a front end to an SQL Server backend, an MSDE backend in this case. And uh, the biggest things that I noticed right off the bat were uh, speed, even with the load governor, which I believe was later, um, they discarded it for SQL Server Express, um, although there were still size limitations of the databases in SQL Server Express. Uh, but the, the speed was incredible. Um, compared to before when there was many users on the system. Um, and the other thing that I noticed was that uh, whenever there was a network sort of interruption or irregularity or, or, or something like that, it, uh, whereas before it would sort of uh, bring the access system down in a sense and I, you'd have to 
sort of compact and repair it and all these other things, um, being managed data, of course, being on a server, um, network connectivity issues were almost eliminated. And that was a really awesome thing uh, that happened after I put MSDE in. And in this one site that I was at, there was actually one computer that had a pinched network cable that would occasionally bring down the entire access system. Uh, and after putting in MSDE, um, that one user would just get an error and, and everybody else would be fine and keep working. And uh, that was a really great outcome. And it turned out that same user kept getting the same error. Um, you know, the, the data server would just say, you know, forget this, I'm not gonna serve out data to you because your network connection is funky. And we went and fixed the, found the pinch network cable, we replaced it, and then that uh, solved that problem. And of course, being a network uh, data server, um, it allowed us to start to do things of a sort of more enterprise nature, like do our backups and do scripting for overnight batch processes and things like that. And of course, that was very, very handy right at the sort of stage that that customer was at. It, it was just the right growth path for them. And that's one of the great things uh, that you'll get for when you do move your database to SQL Server or to Azure SQL, as the case may be. And of course, when I say SQL Server, I'm also including SQL Server Express, uh, which is the free version that you can download from Microsoft and uh, that is a very, very powerful little uh, engine that you can use to enhance your customer experience. Now, in my customer's case that I had, um, MSDE was perfect. Um, it was the perfect size and speed and everything that I needed uh, for that customer to just have a, a really uh, you know, kick-ass, fast uh, application. It really improved the, the end user experience. Uh, but when you're deciding between, you know, should I do, you know, Azure SQL or should I do SQL Server or whatever, there are some considerations uh, that you should sort of take into account. Now, one of those is that, um, you know, Microsoft Azure SQL, of course, is in the cloud. And so while that will give you the ability to let your users you know, come in from anywhere, they can use their data, you know, the database from anywhere, um, it's in the cloud. And so you're limited to the network bandwidth and everything uh, that you have from all of those sites going out to the cloud. Um, and, you know, that might be something that you have to just accept. Uh, but if you are looking for um, just speed, uh, then you will probably, and if your users are all in one place, uh, you will probably use SQL Server uh, on a sort of like a bare metal installation with the super fast server, and that's going to be so fast comp comparatively. Um, and so those are some of the considerations that you might want to make, um, and it all depends on your mix of users and all those kinds of things. Now, if your users are spread out and and you need to have the ultimate in speed, then you're probably going to look at using some kind of uh, terminal server um, deployment uh, or uh, you know remote desktop deployment in the cloud where all of the users come into sort of like one server and the server and the database are tightly integrated together. And in that case, you can use remote desktops with with uh, with Microsoft Access and you can get some really great speed out of that. Now you can also, uh, there are ways that you can just deploy the application uh, to your users so that you can um, just give them the access window and it looks like they're running access on the computer, uh, but really it's running in that remote site right next to the data server. And so the, the speed is really, really fast between the two. And if that's something that you need, then I would say go for that. And so going back to my story, that was a really good outcome that I had with that customer in my first implementation of SQL Server using MSDE. And uh, it, it really sort of changed my mind in terms of uh, when, I should, when I should upsize and how I should upsize uh, when I have Microsoft Access as my database platform. 
as it turns out, uh, the upsizing to uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server or Azure SQL on the back end uh, requires almost no code changes to your Microsoft Access uh, front end uh, database. And so it makes it really super simple to, to do this uh, upsizing and uh, it's almost no changes, changes at all. Um, particularly if you're using mostly DAO objects in your code and things like that, it's going to be super easy. Uh, only in the case of uh, Dynasets, when you're opening uh, record sets as Dynasets, uh, where you can update in, in your uh, record set. Um, in those cases, you'll need to add just one little argument into your uh, uh, open, records, open record set statements, um, but that's really one of the only changes that you need to make to the front end code. So all in all, I would definitely recommend that all of you guys learn how to create your Access database with an Azure SQL backend uh, or an SQL Server backend, whether it's uh, SQL Express or a full SQL Server backend, um, because you'll find that it is very, very handy, super fast, uh, super scalable, and, and it's really a great um, option for your Microsoft Access front-end uh, systems. Now, some of you might ask, should I use another database system on the back end? Like maybe I want to use MySQL or Postgres, or I want to use Oracle or something like that. And I would say, if you, if you have to, then definitely uh, give that a try. Uh, but you will find that just because of the tight integration between the Microsoft products is there, uh, you will find that it's much easier and faster to upsize your application to an SQL Server-based backend, whether it's Azure SQL or SQL Express or whatever, um, you'll definitely find that the experience is better using the Microsoft product. Um, I have had, in my own experience, I've had several databases that were using different backends as well, just because of you know, the environment that I was in. They, they only used a particular kind of database. And you know that's fine too, but there are some gotchas usually around data types and things like that, in particular dates, uh, but you can overcome those and, uh, and get your system up and running. So if you guys have any questions about how to upsize or when to upsize or, or have your own experience or, or a particular situation that you had that was difficult when you were upsizing, uh, please put that in the comment section below because it would be great to hear from you guys and uh, I would love to see your comments. Catch you next time.